Hello, and welcome to the GPCA podcast. I'm your host, James Brim, Executive Advisor at SIPCAM. Today we are gathered here at the 16th annual GPCA Forum. The key narrative is chemistry in action. Industry leaders from around the world are gathered here exchanging ideas on shaping a sustainable future. Today, I have with me the CEO of Sabic Agri-Nutrients and the Vice Chairman of GPCA Agri-Nutrients Committee. It is my intense pleasure to introduce Adu Rahman Sham Shadeen. Thank you, James. It's a pleasure to have to be with you here. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure having you. So with all this action going on, and I believe you just gave a keynote speech, um, we we're roughly eight years in to the 2030 goals, and the world seems off track to reach the SDG targets for hunger and malnutrition. How do we get back on track? That's great. Uh, well, uh, we, uh, we talk about it as well in the conference and it has been a highlight. We, uh, at this stage of, uh, at this point of time, we are acknowledging the reality we are in. Uh, there are uh, challenges in the total context of the whole globe. Uh, we talk about the food crisis, we talk about the you know, climate crisis, we talk about the energy transitioning or so-called crisis, the financial also challenges we have with all the economics slowing down, the uncontrolled inflation. So to start with, we, we have to understand our baseline that it is true. We had a lot of challenges compounding together at this point of time. However, I would say there is also very positive uh, accomplishments we have made in our journey uh, for the SDGs for the 2030 goals. Uh, we talk about how the, the entire globe and the main players are committing to those targets. And that's very important mindset and commitment to be made. Uh, on the same side, I would like to bring that to the agri-neutron side as an industry because we believe we can play a vital role of achieving the 2030 targets. We are well positioned to help the world allow to achieve uh, zero hunger, uh, enabling more collaborative platforms that can get into the whole value chain so we can get as close as possible and practically possible to the SDG goals by 2030 or, or, uh, or even uh, before that. So, so you mentioned uh, this placement and positioning, which is so key and vital. Uh, what are some of the factors that place the fertilizer industry in crisis? And with these challenges, how do they impact this ability to meet these SDGs? It's great. I, I, I would say that agri-nutrients is not in crisis of fertilizer. They are helping to really mitigate the crisis. Because uh, the agri-nutrients uh, in general, the worldwide, we are really responsible for more than 40 to 45 percent of the total food production uh, worldwide. Just an example, if you cut for one year the, the agri-nutrients, nitrogen-based agri-nutrients from the crops, we're basically losing in the harvest about 40 percent they are out. So we believe that agri-nutrients play a role to be part of the solution. Now, with that, we have really also to acknowledge that that has to be provided in a sustainable way, provided in an affordable way. And this is where we are, uh, agri-nutrients industry has been coming together through different associations, including GBC agri-nutrients, to talk about how can we help it, how can we provide more innovative solutions when it comes to agri-nutrients and fertilizers, so we can achieve better yield, as well as also sustainable decarbonized products. Wow, wow, that's a lot going on. It seems this role requires critical mass. Can you talk a little bit about the role of collaboration and coordination, and, and how does that address food insecurity? I'm very pleased that you bring that, James. Collaboration will be in the center of our efforts moving forward. I believe, and this has been collective uh, discussion with all the players I talk to and the peers, that without collaboration, it will be very, very difficult that we can achieve our targets. There is no single party that can do it in isolation. We landed the hard way during COVID-19. The world is so interconnected, it is uh, so uh, interdependent. And if we're likely to tackle a global matter, a global challenge, we have to collaborate. Collaboration in the sense of that we can work with the value chain, so the downstream, the, you know, our customers, the farmers, the growers, and also the food processing retailers and companies. Collaboration with also the policymakers and seeing how we can help to have the right regulatory environment and free trade access as well to get fertilizers and green nutrients to the 
key agriculture regions so we can help to promote more food production so hence avoiding food crisis wow well i guess besides meeting the food crisis and the demand the industry is facing pressure to also reduce the ghg emissions how is the industry going to achieve its net zero ambition that's, that's great because that's really where we are uh, trying to work out, trying to get to the food crisis and be part of the solution, but again within our sustainability, sustainability target. Uh, the, the center of that, we do talk about sustainability and decarbonization for scope one, scope two, scope three, mm -hmm. will be our commitment to innovation. Commitment to innovation when it comes to our own production and reducing uh, our carbon footprint to get to the minimum and achieving hopefully the zero carbon neutrality based on the targets we set for ourselves as industry that varies between 2040 to 2050. At the same time, innovation for the scope three. So how can we help the end customer to have products that will have less emissions, controlled emissions, more nutrition effect, as well as also higher yield. Mm, wow, I think we could probably speak for hours. This reminds me of, of my grandmother telling me, you can call me anything, just don't call me late for dinner. <laughs> so your industry, we gotta make sure we have food around the world. Um, this interview has been really great, and thank you for sharing such powerful insight and perspective. If I can, I would like to just recap two of your key messages that resonated with me. Um, one, the global collaboration is key. I think you've indicated this several times and it's also resonating in other meetings with some of the other CEOs. And then this commitment to innovation. Um, that's my key takeaways and uh, thank you so much for, for being here today with us and uh, we look forward to working with you more in the future. And indeed, spot on. Thank you so oh, much. Thank you so much. Thank you. All the best, thank you. And to our listeners, stay tuned to the next GPCA podcast where we will continue to share thought leadership on how shaping a sustainable future. On behalf of the GPCA, we are happy you are here with us today because we know you could be anywhere, but you're here with us. Thank you so much.